In this video, I'm going to go through four examples on our mole calculations practice, uh, two from the first page and two from the second. In each of these, it's important that you have your periodic table close by and that we follow a set pattern um, so that you're confident uh, you can get each of these right. So in each of these problems, I put a G here for the given, and this is where we read the given quantity in each problem, and then where we're trying to go or what we're trying to de determine. So anytime you figure out the given, whatever that measured value is, you're going to write it up here on these train track looking things. So I'll put 2.19 moles of CH4 here. And then this is our multiplication spot right here. And we're going to put moles of CH4 on the bottom, or one mole of CH4 on the bottom. And then by looking at the periodic table, I can see that each carbon weighs 12.01 grams per mole, and each hydrogen weighs 1.01 grams per mole. So if I multiply those two, I'm going to get, if I add up the masses of those, we get 16.05 grams of CH4 in one mole. And then when I cross off moles, I'm going to be left with grams of CH4 as my answer. So 2.19 now times 16.05 grams per mole is going to give me an answer of 35.15.15 grams of CH4. So each problem is going to look similar. Sometimes there are more steps. In two, it looks like instead of being given the number of grams, uh, or ask, being asked for the number of grams, we're actually given the number of formula units right here, 8.94 times 10 to the 22nd. And think of formula units as like a molecule, except for ionic compounds, we just call them formula units. And what we're trying to determine is the moles of NaCl. So just as before, we're going to start with our given, put it up on the uh, top of our train tracks here. So we put 8.94 times 10 to the 22 NaCLs. So those are individual units. And then in order to convert that into moles, we just have to ask ourselves how many of these are in a mole. And we know that there's Avogadro's number of anything. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd NaCl in one mole. And again, if we cancel out the number of NaCLs, we'll get an answer in the number of moles. And this answer ends up being 0 0.149 moles of NaCl, which makes sense because 8.94 times 10 to the 22nd is smaller than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we get a, an answer that's a fraction of a mole. We scroll down to a little bit of the more challenging problems. Um, number two is asking us how many hydrogen atoms uh, there are in this many moles of H2O. So our given is 0 0.0752 moles of H2O. We're trying to find the number of H atoms. This one's a little bit tricky because we first have to find out how many molecules of water we have. So let's start in the same place. 0 0.0752, always start with our given, moles of H2O. And then we want to find out, well, how many actual water molecules do we have? And we know that one mole of anything, including water, 
as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd H2O molecules. And this is kind of the new trick is we're going to say, well, how many atoms of hydrogen on there are, are in that sample? Well, if we only had one water molecule, we know that there are two hydrogens in that water molecule. So we're going to say for every one molecule of H2O, there are two hydrogen atoms in each molecule. So we actually did the step to turn from moles into molecules, and that's where we got the huge number. And then we just have to multiply by two because there are two hydrogens in every water molecule. Type that in our calculator. we end up getting 9.05 times 10 to the 22nd hydrogen atoms. And then lastly, if we're trying to find, uh, for number three here, the percent composition of oxygen in potassium nitrate, uh, recall that our uh, part over whole or our percent composition formula to find out, well, what part is it in percentage terms? We are going to put our part, which is oxygen. And in this case, if we're trying to find the percent oxygen, That's going to equal the molar mass of all of our oxygens over the formula mass of our uh, compound, which is KNO3, times 100. Using our periodic table, uh, if we looked up our molar mass, we get 101.11 .11 for our formula mass of KNO3. And we just have... <clears throat> to put the molar mass of all three oxygens um, in the top of this. So when we plug this in, go down here a little bit, our percent oxygen is going to equal three times the mass of oxygen from our periodic table over the formula mass of this entire compound times 100. we end up getting 47.5% oxygen. All right, so this is a look at uh, four problems of slightly different type, and uh, the rest of the problems are fairly similar. So hopefully this gets you off to a good start.